I'm going to present a brief overview of tailings dam failure and mud flow modeling downstream flood inundation and, and with two-phase flow for tailings dam failures. I'm going to start by saying that the tailings dam approach um, has a couple of options. Um, you can do a dam breach with either prescribed or breach erosion. You can predict and validate the breach volume using a tailings dam tool that we created in Flow2D. And then you can route the, the uh, hydrograph um, downstream and simulate sediment transport mud flow routing. So the, the primary focus here is to estimate the, the volume of the tailings that are released through the breach and predict the area of inundation downstream. So there are some details that we want to consider in doing this. Um, Flow2D was the first mud flow model um, that was used for tailings dam breaches. Actually, it was the first two-dimensional mud flow model and went by the name of mud flow at one time. It has a dam breach erosion option that can apply to dam material that's separate from the tailings deposit. In other words, you can have the dam be pre-constructed and store the tailings behind it and have the dam be have core material also. The dam breach can occur through piping or overtopping failure. Um, you can do it with prescribed failure, that is a, a vertical and horizontal rate of failure. You can have rainfall and flood inflow um, to the tailings or on the tailings. And the watershed can include infiltration. You can infiltrate the water on the tailings. Um, there can be combined um, reservoir or tailings water over the tailings deposit. And that can also be released through the breach in two-phase flow. And we can do downstream channel and tributary flow interaction with the tailings mud flow. And in addition, um, then we can predict um, the scour and deposition on the bed or the final cessation of the mud flow and do all of this by size fraction. The tailings dam, if we breach it, we can breach it into other um, reservoirs or volumes or tailings dams downstream and have a cascading series of events of failure. So in terms of the actual modeling method by which we can predict the flood inundation, there are two options. One is we can estimate the tailings release volume using the Flow2D tailings tool. This will generate a breach hydrograph for you and we can route this downstream from roughly the, the dam location. Or we can actually predict the tailings dam scour and erosion with either a prescribed breach or a dam breach failure and then use the two-phase flow component. Now, in the first option, we're going to do this on the basis of a tool that we created that you can download from the website. It's, it's uh, free. Um, it predicts the tailings, uh, pot the potential tailings dam failure. Um, it will estimate a release volume for you, typically historically. This is between, between 30 and 40, 50% or so. And it will generate a hydrograph, a breach hydrograph data file for you that you can use in the Flow2D model and route it downstream. So as shown in this image, you're typically a tailing stamp failure will not um, encompass the entire tailing stamp. In other words, all the material will not go through. Usually only a, a less than half of the volume in the tailing stamp will be routed through the breach. Now this particular tool has three failure modes, um, hydrologic, static, and seismic. And it goes through an event tree process by which you add some data to a, to a dialog box. And then it will estimate or, or predict for you whether you're going to have failure or no failure. You can select the failure mode to enter the data in. Again, hydrologic, static, or seismic. Um, 
and the output will be to create this inflow hydrograph. So you enter the the tailing stamp geometry and the material properties. You enter some factors um, for both hydrology or, or all three, the hydrology, static, and seismic um, conditions in three different dialogue box, depending on which failure you want. And then what you generate from this is a hydrograph. Now you can select different shapes of the hydrograph here. You're going to select both a hydrograph and a sediment concentration out of this. And this hydrograph will match the estimated volume from the breach tool. Now, the breach tool will estimate the volume and arrange for you. Let me go back here for a second. It will estimate the volume in a range for you from um, a high volume, an average volume, or medium volume, and a low volume. And so you can have different ranges of uh, and, and estimate different scenarios for this. And typically I use like a um, loaded front end type of hydrograph for a tailing stamp like this one or this one here. These, these other hyd um, failure hydrographs are, are more of an idealized spot bell shaped curve. But um, you, once you have the hydrograph, you can manipulate it. The hydrograph shape, though, is not that critical as it is the, the volume is going to control the downstream area of inundation. The hydrograph volume, the hydrograph shape is more important near the dam and for the first half mile or so. And, and then regardless of the shape, the peak discharge will catch up with the frontal wave and, and the, the hydrograph shape at the release point will not be as important anymore. Now, the second option is to do this uh, dam breach um, failure. And with this, you can either do a prescribed failure with, a, with different rates of failure, vertical and horizontal, or actually predict the scour and erosion of the dam itself and the tailings um, behind the dam with sediment transport and mud flow. So for the sediment transport, there's a choice of 11 sediment transport equations. And if you do sediment routing by size fraction, it will do bed armoring for you. And a typical result will be like this is a channel, but this might be below a dam, um, will be the scour and deposition on the bed below the, below the dam itself. So you'll see um, in waves, scour and deposition is is something that you would typically um, view um, from a, a, a dam. And, and this represents more water in this case than, than it does mud flow. For the mud flows, the mud flow is uh, generally caused because you have high viscosity and high yield stresses. And the viscous stresses overwhelm the turbulent dispersive stresses in, in a um, constitutive shear stress equation. So what we're modeling this as is that um, if you have uh, water, it's generally Newtonian flow. Um, a Bingham fluid adds the yield stress to a, a, a linear relationship between shear stress and, and shear rate or rate of strain. Um, and what we're using is a more of a delayton model where this beta coefficient is squared in relationship to a turbulent dispersive coefficient. So we only model three terms in this. We could add other terms, but um, we, we, we think we can do an adequate job with just the three terms. Now, the mud flow behavior um, is uh, generated from laboratory analysis of mud flow deposits. And this is from my PhD dissertation, but it has been confirmed by other researchers. And um, you, you start with, uh, if you look at sediment concentration by volume and go up through to a landslide, what you're modeling from a tailing stem release is somewhere between 30, 20 to 30% to 50% concentration by volume. And typically, if the tailings are just sitting there, um, without any water over top of them, there'll be something on the order of 40, 40 to 45 percent concentration by volume. 
And so you need some relationships in order to model a mud flow. You need either the dynamic viscosity as a function of concentration by volume of the fluid matrix or shear stress in the same form. And I have provided for you a number of these. Um, if you don't do your own laboratory analysis of, of these relationships, then you can choose something from this um, uh, document. And this document is in guidelines, a mud flow simulation guidelines, which is available as a white paper, which you can download from the website. So a typical flood and mud flow routing downstream of a tailings dam will include um, possible water flooding initially, just to get an idea of the potential area of inundation. Um, maybe a low concentration with some bulk flows, um, and then do the mud flows and mud floods, and then add all of the details that you may need downstream, including channels, hydraulic structures, etc. So um, we now have a component for two-phase flow, and this enables us to predict predict a tailing stam flood inundation when water is sitting on top of the tailings. And when we're doing this, what we're doing, um, we're modeling here, we're simulating a fluid um, phase and a mud flow phase. And the fluid phase rides over the mud flow as the flow is released from the tailing stam. It can scout, the exchange occurs between the fluid phase and the mud flow or if the fluid phase races ahead of the mud flow phase, it'll scour the bed of the channel itself. So you can have um, uh, interchange, exchange between the, the mud flow and the fluid. The fluid can drop sediment to the mud flow. It can scour sediment off the mud flow. Um, the mud flow, if the fluid gets very highly concentrated, it become part of the mud flow. The mud flow can be diluted as part of the fluid flow, and so forth. To simulate this combined analysis of mud flow and, and fluid flow, um, you have to assign two surfaces, a water surface and a tailing surface, as shown here behind this tailing dam. Now, you can do this fairly simple in a, in a tailing dam um, inflow.data file. All you need to do is assign one reservoir element, a water surface elevation, and either a tailings thickness or a tailings elevation, and possibly a reservoir end value that you'd want to use here. Um, but these two, um, in other words, if the tailings, instead of an, um, assigning a tailings thickness, you could assign the tailings elevation at 313.75 feet above sea level or something. So when you're routing the, the flow downstream from a tailings dam um, release here, you can let it flow into a channel or not. Um, you can have the mud flow come out, the fluid flow come out at the same time. It can race over the mud flow. You can have fluid inflow from a tributary and have other mixed flows moving downstream. And likewise, so you can have inflow hydrographs either to a tailings, which might be here, tailings dam, might, which might be here. Um, or you can have um, more fluid enter the stream anywhere downstream. Um, and this could result in overbank flooding, return flow to the channel, and combined mud flow and uh, fluid phase downstream. So in the process of the two-phase flow approach, we can do mud flow cessation and remobilization. The fluid lo layer or, or um, Fluid flow can race ahead over the mud flow layer. The fluid layer can pick up or drop sediment to the mud flow layer. Um, the, the sediment concentration in each layer can vary. The mud flow layer can become more dilute. The, the, mud, the fluid layer can become part of the mud flow layer. If the mud flow layer ceases to exist because it ceased motion, then the mud flow layer can continue, or the fluid layer can continue downstream and exchange with the bed. And we can route the sediment by size fractions and, and simulate bed armoring too. So in terms of maximum depths, um, if we were to plot this very simply, not in a, in a graphics package like 
QGIS or something, but rather just using a simple plot routine. Um, we, we have map max plot um, here too. Um, you can plot the fluid um, inundation for the maximum depth and the mud flow. And here you can see that the mud flow ceased flowing downstream. So you can combine these plots, you can plot the velocities and, and so forth. Or you can make a nice pretty picture as shown here too. Um, here's an example of the Brumadinho, Brumadinho failure. Um, it uh, uh, is shown here with uh, you know some better graphics um, from the QGIS, but still showing the grid element relationship. So there's no transparency, but you can do all kinds of things in making these pictures. But just to give you an idea that you 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 have the ability to do this graphically. Um, you can also look at a final change in bed elevation, doing the bed scour and deposition, and include it with it the sediment, uh, the mud flow cessation, and look at the combined um, result. If you did this in a channel, you might see that the mud flow, um, the channel scoured the bedrock just downstream. This is bank elevation. This is the maximum um, water surface elevation, whether it was mud flow or fluid phase. Um, whichever was the maximum there. And then this is the change in the bed elevation, and you can see that the mud flow deposited or there was sediment deposition on the bed itself, and it gradually um, decreases in the downstream direction. Now, Flow2D reports on both fluid and sediment volume conservation so that you know that you're modeling the volume accurately. Um, the, you can see here that there's absolute zero volume conservation error in the summary.out file, and we have no error to the nearest um, thousandth of a cubic meter in the sediment volume. Now, you might have some volumetric error here, but it's usually pretty small. Um, but there, this typically, the, the, the volume in the reservoir that gets routed downstream is, is typically uh, essentially zero. So as a final product, what we want to do is predict the downstream flood inundation or mud flow inundation. And this is primarily controlled by the breach volume. Um, and so we want to make sure that you check when you're done with your project that you've conserved the volume for both the fluid and the sediment. Um, maybe correlate that volume with the tailings dam tool release volume estimate and then combine the water and tailing stand breach with the two-phase flow model. So this was a brief introduction to this, and now we, um, you can go to the website and access our other um, more instructional type of um, webinar um, PowerPoint presentations and, and videos, as well as other document documents um, on two-phase flow and um, damn breach failures. So I thank you um, and goodbye.